Okay, let's get started. Uh, events at the beginning of the seven year period, uh, right after Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. Events at the beginning of the seven year period, the Antichrist, the coming ruler, makes a covenant with Israel. That's what starts the seven year tribulation. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself. That's when Jesus is crucified. And the people of the prince that, sh that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Verse 27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's one week of years, seven years. And the midst of the week I shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. At the middle of the, of the tribulation, the Antichrist who was allowing Israel to he allowed them to build the temple. Now he's allowing them to have their sacrifices. And in the midst of that week, at the three and a half year mark, he will cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And uh, for the overspreading of abomination, shall he make it desolate. The abomination of desolation where the Antichrist goes into the temple and says, no need to sacrifice animals to God because I am God. And it says, even until the consummation, that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The consummation will be the end of all of this. Three and a half years. Sin has to reach its consummation. Uh, man has to sin. God's going to let man go as far as they can. Now, many uh, scholars that I trust and really like believe and have a strong argument that the Gog Magog War will occur within the first six months of the tribulation due to the fact, <laughs> excuse me, that Israel tells us that Israel, that Ezekiel tells us that Israel will be without walls and gates and living in safety. Uh, they believe, that's according to Ezekiel 38, they believe Israel is dwelling safely because their safety is guaranteed by the Antichrist peace treaty that is signed. They feel that the weapons can be burned for seven years within the tribulation because part of a year counts as a year in, in Jewish timekeeping. So they wouldn't. So I agree with that. I think the weapons that will burn for seven years will be, will be burning during the tribulation. So they wouldn't have to burn for seven total years, just six years and part of the seventh year. Uh, Jimmy DeYoung and, and other scholars believe that the Antichrist will take credit from God for saving Israel from their enemies and will allow them to rebuild the temple and begin sacrifices. This, again, is a very strong argument. And I have uh, uh, the fact that uh, the Antichrist will take credit for God destroying the enemies of Israel at the Gog Magog War. I don't know about that because the Bible says that God uh, will be, everyone will know that God destroyed the enemies of Israel. But uh, I can't say that this is not correct, but for me, one detail besides that one bothers me. I can't see the Antichrist signing a peace treaty with Israel, then allowing Israel to get attacked right after that. If he signs a peace treaty with Israel and then allows Gog Magog to come down from the north and attack Israel, uh, that wouldn't show much strength. I see the attack by Gog Magog and the defeat of Gog Magog by God alone. The Antichrist will clean up the mess and then sign a peace treaty with Israel to guarantee their future safety so they can build their temple and begin sacrifices. That will begin the tribulation. When the treaty with Israel is affirmed, I shouldn't say signed because I believe the treaty already exists in this Abraham covenant or uh, Abraham Accord or whatever it's called out there in the Middle East that the former president started. I believe that that is going to be part of this peace treaty that will be here during the, that the Antichrist will confirm because it says uh, he shall confirm, Daniel 9, 27, the covenant with many for seven years. So it's going to be a seven-year peace treaty confirmed by the Antichrist, which means this treaty already exists. And this could be the Abraham uh, agreement, Abrahamic uh, agreement that these nations have signed with Israel, these smaller nations around Israel. I think it will expand to include many more nations. Uh, and once it got started, it's hard to stop that. See, that's between Israel and their neighbors. The United States uh, really doesn't have, you know, the former president was leading that. Uh, but this president, I don't think 
he would want to stop it. It wouldn't be in, make sense for him to try to stop that. So we'll see what happens. But this is the events at the beginning of the tribulation. Secondly, that's first. Uh, there's going to be uh, a peace treaty signed with Israel, a peace, peace treaty confirmed. Secondly, people are given a strong delusion mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2, 10, 11, and 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in sin, pleasure in unrighteousness. Is this where people who previously heard the gospel will become hardened? I don't know. Uh, many think the delusion's already begun today, this strong delusion. I think it has, in a sense. It's either, rep I know it's reprobate minds, but these people of Romans 128 reprobate minds when people didn't want God, didn't want to honor God or accept God. Uh, then we have these reprobate minded people. So uh, that could be what that is. But uh, I think people are just acting like uh, Romans chapter 1 today. And we don't have that strong delusion yet where it says people... Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 11, God shall send, send them strong delusion because they, as verse 10 says, they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They rejected Jesus Christ. This is a Christ-rejecting world right now, even though many millions are being saved. Many millions are being saved. But God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that actually means the lie. The lie that God is a liar. And Jesus Christ is not the Savior. And the Bible says this reason this happens, that they might all be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They rejected Jesus Christ while they had opportunity. So is this delusion given to them because they rejected Jesus Christ? The rapture occurs, they're left behind. Are those people going to be saved? I don't know. Is that a delusion where they'll never be saved? Many people uh, will believe that. But Listen, there's going to be 144,000 Jewish witnesses and evangelists going out. The two witnesses <clears throat> and angel, an angel preaching the gospel. So wouldn't people have to be under a strong delusion to resist the witness of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists and the two witnesses in the first part of the tribulation? So if you think you've got these powerful evangelists out there preaching the gospel and you reject that, you know you've seen your fam some of your loved ones disappear, and you remember hearing someone teach about the rapture, and you realize you may have been left behind, you're going to run to uh, the church or r get your Bible and begin reading and studying. You'll be scared to death, I would think. But if you have a strong delusion, you see, there's still many, many millions that have never heard the gospel, and I believe they, of course, will hear the gospel and many of those millions will be saved because the Bible says there's going to be many part, many people saved during the first part of the, of the tribulation. And I believe that the millions who have never heard the gospel will receive the message and repent in the first part of the tribulation. Millions upon millions will be saved during the tribulation according to Revelation 7, 9 through 14. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Who are these people? Where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these are people that came out of the tribulation period. And when it says great tribulation, normally that means the second half of the tribulation. But here I believe it means the whole uh, part of the tri all seven years of tribulation, and it says they came out of the great tribulation. I go back to, to verse 9. 
I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne. Now that also should tell us that people in the United States will be saved. But I thought you just said if they've never heard the gospel, they would be saved. Everybody in America has heard the gospel. But has everybody in America had a chance to receive the gospel? Have they rejected the gospel? Have people not really understood it or in America? There's some people that have heard it but not really understood it. They've never rejected him. See, it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness. They had the truth but decided to reject it. They understood the gospel but rejected it. That's what I think it, say, it means. So I believe that strong delusion given to people are those who have heard the gospel, understood it, and rejected it and decided they didn't want anything to do with Jesus. Now, there's many people, sorry, my eyes itching. There's many people who hear the gospel and who don't really understand it. it it's, they're thinking about it, trying to understand it, and they're trying to get it in their heart and figure it out in their mind, and then they forget about it for a while. Uh, maybe those people will be the part of, it says they come out of every nation of the world. will have people saved during the tribulation. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That the tribulation isn't all bad. It is wrath and judgment. It, but God takes the bad and turns it into good. The greatest revival in history will occur during the tribulation period. So that's why we should pray, even so come Lord Jesus. Not only that we could be taken to be with the Lord, but that many left behind will finally see the truth and trust in Jesus Christ. So I would say if you have heard the gospel and understood it and rejected it, you are in big trouble. You know that people who would have to be under a strong delusion to take the mark of the beast in the second half of the tribulation. The question is then, if you've heard the gospel and rejected it before the tribulation, will, be, will you be given a strong delusion during the tribulation? I think so. If you heard the gospel and understood it and willfully decided to reject it, it appears that this is the case, but I can't say for sure. It is hoped that everyone who rejected Jesus Christ before the tribulation will get another chance during the tribulation. My prayer is that everybody will get another chance. But it doesn't seem to be that way. So that's the events at the start of the tribulation. Two things. Uh, two things. A peace treaty signed with Israel by the Antichrist. Or a peace treaty confirmed by the Antichrist. And people are given a strong delusion. Now, let's go to the events during the the first half of the, as the tribulation gets underway now let's see what happens as this great time of Jacob's trouble gets underway first of all temple sacrifices will be instituted there's one two three four five six I think there's let me check my notes here uh, Seven, eight things that happen. I got my numbering right. Probably, I think I got two numbers twice. But anyway, uh, eight things are going to happen at the at the first half of the tribulation or the start of the tribulation. And these things are going to happen very quickly in uh, three and a half years. But they're going to get started quickly. Some of them. First of all, temple sacrifices are instituted. Revelation 11, 1 and 2. And there was given to me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God in the altar. Oh no, I forgot to start, I'm going to start my video. Oh well. <laughs> I'll start it now. Things that are going to happen at the, at, during the three and a half years of tribulation. Things are going to happen. Temple sacrifices will be instituted. Revelation 11, 1 and 2. And there was given me a, re a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God in the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The temple is rebuilt. There will be an Antichrist temple. This is called the Antichrist temple. Because the Antichrist will eventually be the one who sits on this, in this temple throne room or claims to be God in this temple. Already plans are completed and ready to go for the building of the Antichrist temple. Now, they don't call it the Antichrist temple. The Jews call it the Jewish temple. 
the temple can be built in a matter of weeks, you know, with today's modern uh, construction methods, it can be built in a matter of weeks. This is the third temple, and the fourth one will be built during the 1,000-year reign. That will be Jesus' temple that he'll rule and reign on. So there will be four temples. Uh, this is the third temple. Uh, all seems well for God's people as they await the arrival of their Messiah. Uh, the Jewish people, all seems to be going well. They're going to get to build their temple, institute sacrifices. He's already come, sadly, Jesus Christ has already come and they didn't recognize him. But one of the reasons for the tribulation is so that many can be saved, including all of Israel, as they find out at the end of the tribulation that Jesus Christ is their Messiah and the Savior of the world and God himself. Jehovah God is Jesus Christ. When they find that out, they will accept him. Sadly, only one third of the Jews will live to, to accept him as their Savior. And I'm sure some will accept him during the tribulation period and, and be martyred. But uh, number one, temple sacrifices. For the first three and a half years of the tribulation, the temple sacrifices will be reinstituted. Secondly, one world religion and government is the goal. And the Antichrist leads the world in this effort to unite. And this effort, I believe, is ongoing right now. Revelation 17, 10 through 13 and there are seven kings five are fallen one is and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom yet but receive power uh, as kings one hour with the beast they have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast a one world religion and a one world government as they have these ten horns, uh, there's seven kings, five are fallen, one is, the other is not yet come. And this is the Antichrist that's going to come out of these seven kings and these ten horns. Ten horns means power. power. Daniel talked about uh, the ten horns. The ten horns with South Sauce are ten kings or elite rulers. I don't think they're nations. They're elite rulers which have received no kingdom as yet. Could it, it says they don't have a kingdom. So it could be the elite rulers of the world. Who are the leaders of the world today, really? Who controls the world? Tech, technology, technology, big business, technology. They rule the world today. So these kings, these elite leaders who have no kingdom yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They're going to have a lot of power just a short time with the beast who is the Antichrist. That's what he's called in the book of Revelation. Only John called him uh, the Antichrist in the book of John. <clears throat> These have one mind. He's called the man of sin. Uh, he's called the little horn. Uh, These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These elite rulers are looking for a leader and they will give all their power and their might and their authority unto the antichrist the beast so one world religion and government all these nations the powerful elites will join together and the antichrist will lead the world in this effort to unite the world that's how you that's why god did not want us to have uh all these uh one world governments the tower of babel because as we've said before they would Mankind messes everything up, and God knew we needed nation states to protect each other as checks and balances against each other. So that's the only way fallen men could live and have peace, semblance of peace, even though there's not much peace, but there at least isn't one despot who's holding... You know, when you have one world government, you're going to have communism, socialism. It just happens. It's just the way it is. That's mankind's answer to everything, is equity... But the only problem is it's equity for all below the elite rulers. They're on top, and the, the minions and the poor live below. Their equity, they're all the same, but they have very little. Uh, so it's very uh, sad that you would want socialism because only you're just giving everything to the elite, and the rest of us will be just little sheep as we try to uh, survive. And, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that says the United States will not fall to socialism and communism. It just isn't there. It's very possible. I hope it's not. 
but we are certainly headed this way. We are certainly uh, engaged in the one world government with the World Economic Council, the Paris Climate Accord, and uh, the United Nations and all their programs. Uh, we are now in lockstep with them. Uh, we, uh, China, and their power, there's so many people trying to gain a piece of the world, but they're all going to unite under the Antichrist. And the strange thing is that China's not really mentioned in, the, uh, in all this. So that leads me to figure that, you know, China has a lot of economic problems and their people are starving. You know, the United States is the wheat basket of the world. We still have the greatest land and greatest farmers in the history of the world. China only has like one third of their land that is actually, they're able to raise crops on. The rest of it is, is swampy desert or rocky or uh, it's, the elevation's too high. They have a lot of problems providing food for 1.3 billion people. And if you notice, look at a map of China and you'll see most of the people live on the eastern side and toward the southeast, all their largest cities. And people are crowded in there because the rest of the land toward the west is not uh, that inhabitable. So they have a time, and that's why they want America. They want our land. They want what we have. And somehow they're going to be defeated. They're going to defeat themselves. They're going to, the United States is going to nuke them, or uh, Russia, or I don't know what's going to happen to China. But maybe things will happen so quickly, you know, the... The tribulation could start this year, and China hasn't had time to begin to march over and, and destroy anybody. Maybe China is caught off guard and has to give, maybe they're caught under the Antichrist spell. Maybe they see this as, maybe they're invited to the table. Maybe they're one of the ten kings or elite powers. Maybe they're given a big part of what's going to happen. You know, China has a lot of technology. They've stolen most of it. But they do have technology, and maybe they're invited to this table of the Ten Kings. <clears throat> My idea is, I don't know <laughs> exactly how it's going to all work out, but I know that things are headed toward a one-world government. So you've got the temple sacrifices instituted. The temple is going to be built very quickly. There's a one-world religion, one-world government. Of course, uh, we haven't gotten to... Uh, the guy, uh, the false prophet, he's going to be right alongside with the Antichrist, but we'll get to him in a minute. Two witnesses begin their ministry, Revelation 11, 3, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. That's very comfortable. Some say this could happen in the last half of the tribulation, but I believe that it wouldn't make sense for them to be taken up just before Christ comes back to the earth. Now, that would be a U-turn for them. I believe they're going to give warnings about the last half of the tribulation, known as the time of Jacob's trouble, and that's when the Antichrist turns up the heat on Israel. They witness for 42 months. I believe it's going to be the first part of the tribulation, first three and a half years. That's why they've made my list of things that will happen in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. They will witness for 42 months. They are killed at the midpoint, according to Revelation 11:7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So if the book of Revelation is in chronological order, and I believe it is, they have, must have started their ministry at the beginning of the tribulation. One reason God is going to pour out his wrath on the world is the way they treated uh, his two witnesses, the 144,000 and the two witnesses. The hardships on the 144,000, according to Matthew 25. And the three angels' message, mostly rejected. That's another reason God pours his wrath out upon this earth. Not only they rejected Jesus Christ while they uh, had opportunity during the church age, but they rejected Jesus Christ through the witness of the 144,000, the two witnesses, and the angels. So, strong delusion that we talked about. Evidently, it is definitely going to happen to these people. Uh, you would have to be out of your mind to see an angel flying around and reject that message. The preaching of these 144,000 Jewish evangelists. Think of your greatest preacher you've ever heard. To me, it's Adrian Rogers, uh, Jimmy Grayson, 
some people like that, and maybe you know somebody right, think of them on times 10, and you got 144,000 of them. How could you resist the message of grace? It'd be like Michael Markham in a, a revival, you know, how he has, has a way of drawing people out. And uh, how would you like to have 144,000 of those preaching? So, listen, it's going to be uh, rejected. Many, many millions will be saved, though, because we saw where many, many millions will be saved, praise God. But uh, many will reject them. Matthew 25, 41 through 45, And he shall say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye accursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no rest. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they say, then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to the one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Uh, Israel is going to be persecuted during this uh, second half of the tribulation and uh, people will fail to support and defend Israel. And that's uh, the reason, another reason that they're going to be, God is going to judge people for rejecting Jesus Christ, rejecting 144,000, rejecting the message of the two witnesses, the angels, and also the way they treated Israel during this time period. Okay, so we've talked about 144,000. Uh, that's the fourth thing that's going to happen in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. They're going to be saved and sealed. Revelation 7 talks about that. And I, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the, on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel descending from the east, having the seal of the living God. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the, the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the sea, the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And it goes and lists the 12 tribes, 12,000 from each tribe. They witnessed throughout the tribulation. Matthew 25 tells us that the judgment of the sheep and the goats will end, will be at the end of the tribulation, is due to the way these witnesses were treated. If you treated them well, you entered in the millennial kingdom. If you did not, you're cast into hell. And uh, it's the way you treated these 144,000 witnesses and Jews in general. Now, when I read Matthew 25, verses 41 through 45 about being in jail and you visited me not, some people think that's the 144,000 that are going through all this. They're going to be persecuted, but they will not be killed. They have a mark in their head. Satan cannot kill them. Uh, but he can put them in jail. He can uh, not feed them and all this stuff. And uh, they, they can even possibly get sick if you believe Matthew 25, 41 through 45 is talking about 144,000. I don't know uh, if I agree with all that or not. But definitely uh, Matthew 25, 41 through 45 is a double, one of those double prophecies where it talks about Israel and the way we treat them in the, in the seven-year tribulation and also the way we treat people today. We should visit people in prison. When I was in prison ministry, that was the verse that uh, inspired me to go visit people in jail. I was in prison ministry for 15 years. So when people ask me, you ever been in jail? I say, yeah, uh, 15 years, once a week. Uh, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of time in jail. <laughs> so yeah, I spent time in jail. Uh, two hours, sometimes we'd minister for two hours a night and I'd play guitar and sing and a friend of mine, Gary Branham would preach and Gary did a great job and we had other preachers, Paul Stepp, you may know him and a couple other guys and sometimes I would preach but mostly I played guitar and sang for him and uh, I guess uh, the Lord blessed but okay 144,000 sealed and saved and sealed. How much time we got left? We are, I'm trying to look down my clock. I can't see it. We're already past time. I'm going to have to wrap up. We'll get down to uh, number five uh, next week. Let's do that next week. 
I don't want to wear you guys out with this. So we've looked at the things that will start at the beginning of the tribulation and things that, uh, two things that happen at the beginning of the tribulation. Let's review. That's what a good teacher does. Right, Jessica? You review. So uh, events at the beginning of the seven-year period, the Antichrist makes a, a, confirms a covenant with Israel. That's the first thing that happens at the beginning. Uh, I believe the Gog Magog War starts ju just before the beginning, maybe six, five, six months before the beginning of the tribulation, after the rapture. Or it starts right after the rapture, and then the, the Gog Magog War, and then the tribulation begins with a peace treaty, because they'll need peace after the Gog Magog War. And then people are given a strong delusion. This is at the beginning of the seven year. Uh, tribulation. <laughs> uh, people are given a strong delusion that have rejected Jesus Christ, but that knowingly understood the gospel. Like I said, many people will hear the gospel and like a young person or a child or a person who struggled in sin all their lives and they want to be saved. They're trying to, to understand it uh, and they, they're studying it and they want to come to Christ. They just don't really understand it. I think that person will not receive a strong delusion, but a person who knowingly in their heart knows what the gospel means, they need to trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and rejects him, they will receive a strong delusion. <laughs> a strong delusion. And that will uh, be a sad thing indeed. But the, as I said, earlier millions and millions will accept christ so we should, that's why we should pray even so come lord jesus maranatha come lord jesus because it'll be the time of greatest revival in world history time of greatest revival in world history so uh so far okay that's beginning that's before the three and a half years now the three and a half years has begun temple sacrifices instituted one world religion and government is the goal and the antichrist leads the world in this effort uh, two witnesses begin their ministry and many people have asked me who do you think the two witnesses are two witnesses I don't know are they Elijah and Moses I don't know I, I just don't think they are could be uh, but uh, that would be something else wouldn't it but I don't know who they are the Bible doesn't really say that we can be certain but they are going to be powerful preachers clothed in sackcloth that is, they're going to look very strange and they're going to be just preachers, street preachers or proclaiming. And with our technology today, they can stand on the street uh, and preach. And I think they're going to be in Israel at Jerusalem and they're going to stand on the street and preach and the whole world's going to hear them and have access to them. And uh, that's what's going to be amazing about these guys. So the two witnesses begin their ministry. Then the 144,000 uh, Jewish evangelists will be saved and sealed. And uh, these 12,000 from all the 12 tribes, so they can witness to their people and see people come to Jesus. But not only them, millions and millions of others of people, of Gentiles, will come to faith in Christ in the greatest revival in world history. That's why we have to play, uh, pray. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And then uh, they'll witness throughout the tribulation. Next week, we will get to the first seal. And there's different opinions on the seal judgments. Remember, there's seal, trumpet, and bowl judgments. The way I always remember it is, think of a seal, you know, or, or, or <laughs> playing. You know, have you seen these seals? Maybe you haven't. Maybe I'm totally making this up. You know, they have trained seals that play a trumpet. They'll line up some trumpets and they hit it with their nose and play the trumpet. Uh, that's the way I think of this. The seal plays the trumpets and for a snack he eats out of a bowl. That's the bowl judgments. That's how I remember the order. That may be weird. <laughs> but seals, then the trumpet judgments, then the bowl judgments. The bowl judgments, judgments where the wrath of God is poured out on the world. And that's not going to be very nice is it for the world 
But the seal judgments, there's lots of controversy about that, uh, exactly when it occurs. And I'm going to give you uh, next week the two uh, reasons or the two beliefs and uh, which one... Uh, <laughs> want to do it again? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do the seal again. Where's my cat? When you're, when you're dying in front of the audience, bring on an animal or a child, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a child. Where's Brody? <laughs> that always uh, gets the crowd back. And I don't know where my cat is. She was here earlier, but I made her mad. But anyway, uh, we're going to... <clears throat> oh. <laughs> we have a cat. But anyway, we are... Uh, so excited to be able to share this with you. And next week, the we're going to talk about the seal judgments. And there's a thing called uh, earthquake resurrection that has had a lot of, caused me to have a lot of study and second thoughts about when these seal judgments appear. If you want to Google earthquake resurrection, and you can get a head start on what I'm going to talk about. I'm not saying that I believe that's the way it is, but it's very very interesting. We studied it one night at church on Wednesday night, and uh, it was very fascinating. 